Hello and welcome to another Comedian's Interview for my blog and podcast, A Rich Comic Life. My name is Richard Gill and my blog describes my experiences of watching well over 1,000 comedians for nearly 50 years. My guest today is the wonderful comedian, it's Michelle Shaughnessy. Yay! Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for doing this and being my guest. No problem. I'm happy that we made it work. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So, so it's going to be uh, the interview is going to be about 50 minutes to an hour, uh, all about your comedy career. And I'd like to kick off, please, by asking how did you become a comedian in the first place? Well, I think for me it was different because I I first tried it when I was 18. Right. So I never, I didn't really grow up watching it. Like my family wasn't really that into stand-up comedy. Like we watched comedy shows, but not like stand-up comedy. Um, so I had never seen a professional comedy show before I stepped on stage to try it. Right. Um, I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be a serious actress. Um, but I always kind of gravitated towards laughter because I was picked on a lot and it was kind of like a coping mechanism, you know, to like be the funny person. Right. Um, and then my mom was like, you should try it. You should really try it. And I tried it and I just never stopped. So I kind of feel like maybe it ruined my life. Maybe I should have went for, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> a more dramatic career, but here I am. What, what year did you first start? Oh, I'm not telling you that because then you'll know my age. <laughs> oh, okay, but recent was it? Or it's been a long time. I started when I was a teenager, so. Oh wow! 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 wow. Um, and uh, when you first started, was it in? Did did you do like five minute slots in pubs and bring friends along, or how how? Yeah, did you get into well, it? my first show that I ever did was on an amateur night at Yak Yaks in Toronto. So I think it was five minute spots. And then from there, you start to go to like the pub open mics. Yeah. Um, and you would try to get as many friends. Like we didn't really have, we don't really have bringer shows in Canada. I know they have them here and in other parts and in the States, but we never really had that. So it wasn't like, oh, you have to bring a certain number of people to get up, but you would still want people there. Right. So you would try to like, you know, get as many of your coworkers and friends to like come and watch you as you could at the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of how it goes. Like you do amateur nights at the club whenever you can. But other than that, it was just like those bar open mics where most of the comics are pretty new. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am uh, um, uh, uh, often in uh, new comedy night gigs uh, mm -hmm. as I have a very loud laugh. And uh, friends of mine who who want to become comedians always say, "Rich, will you come along and and just sit there and laugh?" And say, "Yeah, yeah, if you're funny, you know." So so yeah. it's a, it's a, it's it's a wonderful way of getting into it. But 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 also also what you say, it's very good. It's all about experience, I can imagine. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think you got to go through those types of shows to kind of get anywhere in the business, you know, like. Yeah. It's one of those things that, like, now to do it, I'd be like, oh, I don't want to go do it. You know what I mean? Like, but back then, like, you're getting something out of it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So I think it's really important to, like, do that. So so what was your first ever gig like? Where, where was it and what was it like? Like the first time I was on stage? Yeah. That would be Toronto, Yak Yaks. Um, it went really good. I remember it, I got heckled. Someone called me fat. Um, no. Yeah, I well, I I was at the time. Um, <laughs> so they were right, but uh, like it was part. I was doing a joke about how a doctor told me I was fat, and someone was like, "Your doctor's right, you are fat." Um, and I, I don't remember what I like. I quipped back and got a laugh, and then it just went well from there. So it went well. Like in my head, it probably didn't go as good as I remember it, but I I remember it went really well, and all my friends were like, "Oh my god, that was so good! Like you need to keep doing this." I don't know how I would have felt if it didn't go well. You know, like if I had bombed, maybe I never would have done it again. But I do know that I got enough laughs to be like, this feels so good. Like, I want to keep this feeling, you know, I always I always say to comedians, I can imagine that um, uh, if you do have a bad gig again, it's all experience. You have to you have to go through that to become a better comedian. Would, would you agree with that? Well, absolutely. I mean, nobody's going to kill all the time. Like, it's, yeah. it's just not a thing um and it's like well, comics who say they've never had a bad show or they've never bombed they're either brand new 
they're lying or they're delusional and don't know when they're not doing them. You know, we <laughs> love bad shows. I think what a bad show is now is different than what a bad show was when I first started. You know, right. like I can have a show now where the audience is like, that was great. But in my mind, I'm like, it wasn't because I could have done this better. I could have done this differently. But to people watching, it wasn't a bad show. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's fascinating. Um, yeah. Did you ever find it difficult at all to break through into comedy? And 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 what I mean by that is, um, did you ever find it difficult finding gigs? Was there always gigs to no. go to? Now, this is a bit of an odd one for me because initially, absolutely not. I got really far really fast in the right. sense that, like, like I said, I started when I was really young. I was working professionally not long after that. Um, I had no trouble getting on stage in Toronto. Um, I was working for Yuck Yucks by the time I was like 23, like getting paid work. So that stuff happened naturally. And then progressing into getting paid more and then doing longer sets and then being a headliner. That stuff all happened as it should happen. Now for me, the hard thing that I, I'm trying to think of how to explain it, to get further than that has been really hard. So for me to break into television or get further than just being a stand-up has been so hard. And I've been working at it for so long. Um, so that's where I kind of hit a wall, if that makes sense, where everything happened fast, 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 and then just like stopped. So that's kind of like where I would say breaking into it has been hard for me, getting further than I am. And, you know, I talk to like some comics and there's comics who are newer and they're like, yeah, but I would love to be doing what you're doing. So I try to remind myself of that you know, that there's people who would love to just be a professional comedian and have this be their only job. So I am grateful for that. But I definitely have moments where I think like, is this all there is for me? Like, am I never going to get to that next level? And that's where I would say it's hard to break into it in that regard. So breaking in, no, but continually getting further. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's a little hard. Well, all, all I can say to that answer is in all the comedy I've seen throughout my life, you are one of the most endearing and enthusiastic comedians I've ever seen on stage. And Thank I've you. seen, really seen you two that. or three times now. And so and so I can I can make a good and honest judgment. Uh, you're 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 very endearing. So so in other words, I mean if you uh, take the microphone you're determined to make that audience laugh, get them on your side and say whatever you like to them. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's nice to hear that. I feel like like moving here, it was almost like, I'm not going to say starting over because I didn't start over and I'm very grateful for that. Like I didn't have to go back to amateur nights. I didn't, like I had paid work right away. Yeah. Um. So I think for me, it's just about, like I do have confidence when I'm on stage. I do yeah. know, okay, I can make this person laugh. I won't stop until I do. So for me, it's just a matter of like being here and trying to get like the right people at my shows, which has been really hard, you know, cause they have a million people that they want to see and everybody wants to be on TV, you know? But I do have days where I'm like, okay, I'm failing. And then I have other moments where I'm like, no, I just have to be patient. Like it'll happen, you know? I'm trying this new thing right now. How familiar are you with manifesting? How familiar am I with manifestation, like manifesting your dreams? Uh, well, I have dreams. Yeah. <laughs> they have this thing. It's like, okay, this book called The Secret came out like a decade ago that was so popular where it's just like, if you can vision yourself rich, you'll be rich. If you can believe it, you can, you know what I mean? So I've been trying this whole like new positive, new wave of thinking where I just tell myself every day I am successful. Like I, it will work out all that stuff. It's only been two weeks. Like I'm sure if you talk to me another two weeks, I'll be like, that was bullshit. Waste of time. But right <laughs> now you've caught me in a really positive wave of my life where i'm telling myself that everything will work out well i i am um, this th this time last year i was working in a school which i did not enjoy and mm -hmm. i was very unhappy i had the comedy as a release i would go to the comedy and it's it's always been there for me this last year i've worked in a council in london mm -hmm. and i have taken to the job like there is no tomorrow and i am really flying i'm very very happy with my lot and i'm content with it and uh, I've, I've 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 just recently had a medical review at the doctor and they said you know the quality of life is all determined about how you live each day and so instead of the routine which is the work 
I've also got the escape, which is the comedy, and 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 of course I hope the blog and the interviews show that I'm so much passionate about it. And, That's great. And, you know, it's just it's it. So so I wish you every success because what what is wonderful about you is that you're fearless. Or you you always seem to be fearless with an audience. You're not afraid to chat to them. And, and 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 talk really quite meaningful with them and and they love you for it because because I, I can see as I'm as I'm looking around I do feel like if I could take some of that fearlessness into the real world yeah it would probably go a lot better for me but I don't like I have more confidence on stage than I do in any area of life you know so I I do need to kind of try to figure out how to emulate that in my offstage life Right. Okay. That's 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 fascinating again. Um, so so let's move on to this. What do you like to specifically talk about on stage? Do you have any themes or anything like that? No, I guess the only thing is just what's happening in my life. Like I'm very self-centered. So you're never going to have me go up on stage and be like, oh, what's the deal with this? Or what's the deal with the rain? Like I'm too self-absorbed to talk about the world around me, if that makes sense. So I just talk about what's going on in my life. And there's always people that can relate to it. Like, that's the one thing I like about comedy is it's taught me no matter how massive of a situation I'm in personally or what I'm going through, other people can relate to it. So in terms of theme, I guess I would just say myself, like, I just, like, I think I'm very personal on stage, you know? And if there are some comics who aren't and it works for them. Like, there's some comics that you watch their whole hour and you're like, I don't know a thing about this person because <laughs> comedy is not about them. I'm just the exact opposite of that. I think, I think that's... Well, I think, well, obviously, from you saying it, it's it's it, it, it's very true, but it also comes across in your performance how personable and relatable you are. And again, that's why yeah. the audience warm to you. You know, it's 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 wonderful to see. And it's a great quality to have as as a as a thank community. you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, how do you remember all your routines? Do you, do you have notes on your hand? Do you have points no, in your head? I don't know. You just do. Like, I don't know. Like, I've always been good with memory. Like, when I have, like, an audition, I can memorize the lines within, like, 20 minutes. Max. Like, I'm really oh. good with that. But I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm talking about my life. So I know my life. Does that make sense? So it's not like I have to memorize a bit. I just know, okay, I'm going to talk about this, and then I talk about it. Does that make sense? It does very much so. It, yeah. it 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 reminds me. Um, other than this blog, the most creative thing I ever did was write a play. Which, oh, fun! Yeah, yeah. Which we which we put on for comic relief. Um, it's called it's called the applicant. It it originally it was for the Edinburgh Fringe. I might well take it up there. Um, and and basically it was me. Uh, on stage uh, and I'd never had a job I'd never had a job interview and my friend who did all, all who's very good at mimicry did all the accents for the different interviewers so it was like a, a, a monologue to set up the crowd I like that and then the interview and a monologue and an interview and we rehearsed this for about three months and I ran out the first night and I completely forgot my lines <laughs> and, and and the question from that is i can imagine um uh being an actor is being different to a stand-up comedian because is that true because you have say the audience to bounce off well yes but not only that i think like if you're acting you don't feel judged right because yeah. you're playing a character so maybe the character's being judged but when you're a comic, you're putting yourself out there. So if people don't like it. It's not like, oh, they didn't like the character in the movie. They didn't like me. So I think it's you need more vulnerability to be a comedian than an actor, I think, anyway. That's very true, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, very much so. Um, what is your view of comedy competitions? Have you been in any? Have, do you... I've done them. I hate them. I'm <laughs> going to tell people not to do them because I think they're good for newer comics. Yeah. But comedy is just so subjective. So it's one of those things that like you can't put a lot of stock into where you place in comedy contests because also a lot of the times the judges aren't people that are familiar with comedy. So they can say something like, they can judge it on it. Well, I didn't like it as opposed to being like everybody else is laughing, you know? So, I mean, I think 
I don't know. Do them if you want, but I would hopefully <laughs> never have to do one again. Do you think they further a comedian's career? I mean, it can if you're on something like Britain's Got Talent, for sure it can. Um, and I know here there's like gong shows and stuff where you're competing to like get a pro spot. Sure, I think that definitely helps. Um, but I don't think they're the be all and end all. Like, I don't think you need them to further your career. No. I I um I I had a go at stand up comedy once in my life, um where it was a it was a gong show, uh in in Edinburgh. This was years and years ago, and uh, there was three people in the crowd, and uh, I said to the promoter, um, I, I want to be a stand up comedian. He said, go away and write a script. So I wrote a script about me crashing cars in Carlisle up north, which is my home city. And uh, I walked out, and the first thing I said to them was, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. People think I look like Eddie the Eagle Edwards, the ski jumper, but I can't see the resemblance myself. Now, this ski jumper was very famous in the Winter Olympics, and they say everybody's got a double, and, I've, uh, and he's the double of me. So as I said this line, somebody at the back just went, walk off, and <laughs> cut me off. <laughs> and that was it. That was my... And I walked off to the sound of my footprints and I said to the promoter, I think my calling is sitting in the audience. Listen, gong shows I think are awful. And <laughs> again, we didn't have those when I was starting out, so I never had to endure it. But I think it's awful. Like the fact that somebody can just look at you and be like, I don't like what they're wearing. I'm going to go. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like you have to take this stuff with a grain of salt, you know? <laughs> oh, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I mean, never say never again, but. It, it it was a lesson learned because yeah. now I'm very good at um, <clears throat> uh, excuse me I'm very good at, at organizing comedy bills for friends I'm very good at um, deciding what they might like and what they not might like for someone who for 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 somebody who's not into comedy or anything and normally they come back and say Rich that was fantastic you know so. Um, so I've learned a lot from watching you all, but actually having a go was a bit, was a bit <laughs> daunting. <laughs> um, do you suffer from any nerves before you go on stage? And if so, how do you cope with them? I mean, a little, but not really. Like, it's not like I get freaked out. Like, I know I'll do a good job. I get nervous if it's like, if there's somebody there watching me or if it's for like an industry thing or like, if the audience looks wasted, things like that, but not really. Like I don't get like those like jitters, you know? Like I know some comics need to sit by themselves and prepare. And I did for like Edinburgh because that's an hour and it was like out of my wheelhouse of experience, but for just a regular like pub spot, not really like, I mean a little bit, I think it's good to get nervous a little bit, but I don't have like anxiety. Like I have anxiety about everything else in life. I get nervous about everything. Having to make a phone call, having to meet somebody for the first time, having to go into a building by myself. That, to me, I get nervous about. Like, I, I guess it goes back to what I was saying earlier, like the version of me on stage, I wish that I could be like that in everyday life. It's like, I'm I'm really actually like introverted and like scared of everything and everyone. That's, that's incredible because you are very, very confident on stage. Thank you. I And it, I have had people like, I remember someone tweeted at me once that I they were like, oh, you're such a bitch. I tried to talk to you after the show. And I was like, I guess they took me the way I spoke to them as like me being a snob. And it's not like I'm just very awkward. You know, right. I get nervous around people and talking to audience after shows and stuff. So I do. I have been trying to get better at it because I don't want it to come off like I don't have time for people or like I am a snob, but I'm just shy. That's that's fascinating because um, when we saw you, for example, at Leicester, yeah. Afterwards, you were like, "Oh, hello, lovely, come and have a photograph." And it was I'm getting better, but also I, you were at my friend show, so I remembered you. So you were a repeat guest, but <laughs> um, for sure. When, but I'm actually once you've trying, seen me, <laughs> I'm actually trying to get better at it because I do know that it can come off as like you know, oh, I'm a performer, don't talk to me, and that's not my intention. No, no. Would, would you say that uh, as soon as you get your first laugh, any nerves that you may have had go? Or, or is it when you walk on the stage? No, I think once I know they're into it. Yeah. You know, once I know they're into it, I can relax a little bit. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah. yeah. Um, okay, let's let's move on to Edinburgh itself. Um, I I'm very fortunate to be able to go to the Edinburgh Festival every year. And it's my holiday. I see about 50 shows. I absolutely love it. Um, can you tell me about your first experience of the Edinburgh Fringe? We, did you go up as a punter? Uh, um, no, what, the first it? time was when you saw me. All right. Okay. That's the only time I've ever been. Um, what did you think of it? It's fine. <laughs> it work. A lot of money. Nothing I wanted came out of it. Um, I think I went with way too high expectations. Right. I think I was in a room that was way too big for me. I think if I go again, I'll definitely have more of a say in like my show and where I perform and my image as opposed to like, because I didn't know any better. So I just listened to other people and let them dictate where my show should be, what time it should be, how, for how many people, you know? Um, and it was just wrong. And that's to no fault of anyone else's. Like, I think it was a weird year. Um, the first year back after COVID, I don't think mm. the numbers were there, how people wanted them to. Um, but I think I really got my ego kicked, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, I didn't have the industry love. I didn't have, like, I think a lot of things that I were convinced were going to happen didn't happen. And I had just moved to the UK, right? So I think there was that fear in me where I felt like everything was riding on having a good festival. And then when I didn't, I think I had to like kind of take a step back and be like, why am I here? You know, what do I want out of life here? Because I think I thought it was going to come so easily after the festival. I thought if I did it, people would see me, I'd get on TV, my career would take off. You know, like in hindsight, saying it out loud makes me realize how stupid that is that I thought things were just going to happen that quickly and that easily um and so when they didn't I think it really threw me for a loop and kind of like it was depressing like I definitely went through a depression for a while um and that was tough you know like trying what, to figure out like what what's interesting things. is that the, the the way that you've gone about it is very very positive you mm -hmm. knew how good you were and you thought this is this is the way through and because it it hasn't happened for you it, it it's a learning curve it must be a learning curve because you know how to approach things well it is a learning curve but it's also one of those things where i think i know this is more of the case for women but there have been people in the industry since i've moved here that have in politer terms told me they were looking for younger or we're not signing anybody unless they're younger or this show's looking for younger. And that to me, I think that's not fair. It's not even that it's not fair. I think to me, that just made me really feel like maybe I have, it is too late for me, you know? And I, I know men comics who've had the same thing said to them, but I also know there was one show in particular, I'm not going to name it that I wanted to do. And they said, we're looking for younger. And then they took men that are older than me. So to me, I do think it is harder as a woman. Um, Cause I think when they often when they say we're looking for younger, they mean we're looking for younger women, you know, like it's okay for a man to be a aging in this business. But I think for me um, having that happen, like off the back of the festival, it just really kind of rocked me into like me feeling like maybe I should have done this 10, 15 years ago, you know, right. maybe I should have made this move before and tried harder before. Um, it's but, funny. You know, everything happens for a reason so i'm just trying to stay positive and well very very good so, yeah and 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 i mean you you made us laugh laugh mm -hmm. out loud all the time well it's, that's the thing you're only as good as like the people that watch your show you know yeah, yeah. so i think for me i have like for me it's not that i'm having a hard time doing good on stage in the yeah. uk i'm having a hard time getting industry to come watch me and take right, a chance i see yeah that yeah. makes sense so i think that is frustrating because i know if i could just get the people there everything will be okay you know but i have not been able to do that and it's frustrating it's hard to move from a country where you could just email a production company or email, email yeah. a producer and be like hey what's up like come down to my show and getting responses to like moving to a place where i don't know anybody they don't know me. They get 5,000 emails a day, you know, and I don't have an agent. So I think trying to navigate everything has just been really eye opening and really I've had to become a lot stronger as a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, I was I was going to say when when you came over from Canada to Britain, did you have 
any comedy friends at all? Did you know any comedians? Yeah, but I, okay. So my friend who used to do comedy here, he now lives in Canada, Pete Johansson, hilarious comic. Yeah. He was really encouraging of it. And he was like, and uh, Catherine Ryan, I love her so much. We yeah. started comedy back in the day. So she's, she, I consider her a friend for sure. Um, so I had people being like, you got to come here. There's a lot of work. Like you would do great here. And also I had an agent when I first got here. Like, so I got hooked up with an agent before I even got here. So I had paid work set up, which was great. I'm so grateful to that that I had that. Um, so that's what made me kind of like take the leap and be like, okay, like, cause I was originally just going to come for fringe. Um, and I'm glad I didn't, because if I had just come for fringe, I would have been like, that was awful. I'm never going back, you know? So I'm glad that I really kind of committed here because now I just, there's kind of no going back, you know, like yeah, I, yeah. I'm, yeah. my life over here. Um, so I had a few friends like Bobby Mayer and like I said, Catherine and um, Allison so Smith in Manchester. Yeah. But, I don't get to see them a lot. Like they're so busy, you know? So I have kind of been on my own, um, but I did know people here who were doing really well for themselves. Have you been to any uh, festivals other than Edinburgh? Like fringe festivals, you mean? Yeah, so like Leicester or Hastings. Or Leicester, but we don't really have like, no, I haven't. No. So where I'm from, we have French festivals, but nobody does comedy at them. It's not like that. It's just like right. the plays and stuff, right? So this whole world of like French and festivals is very new to me. Oh, I did I, I did the Brighton French last year before um, I went to Scotland. Um, yeah. And then Leicester, and then that's about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you think of those? Did, 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 were they good experiences? I love them because there's no pressure. There's nothing yeah. wrong on it. It's not like Edinburgh where you have to fill a big room and you're hoping somebody will come in and write you a good review. So I loved them because there was no pressure. Like it was just me being myself for an hour and I really liked that. Are you, are you going to the Fringe this year? No. No. No, I don't have anything to say. I um, I feel like I would just be going just to go and that's not a good place to be in artistically. So I think I'll go back when I have something artistically in me that I need to get out but I think for me the best thing to do is to focus on getting the next steps in my career here and I don't think you need to go to the festival to do that anymore well please 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 keep going because you're a great comedian you. you really are you you, you you we were we were blown away by you on stage absolutely brilliant um so uh, who are your favorite comedians past and present you know, that's a tough one for me because it changes all the time. I think for me, one of my favorite, the favorite comics to watch are just who I'm working with, you know, um, because I think it's great to see, especially since relocating to the UK, because there's so much talent here. So much talent. There's so um, many of them. <laughs> so many, or you know, and even like, there's just too many to name like there's so many so i think for me i try to like really pay attention to like the comics i'm on the shows with because it's all new to me i don't know their stuff and i just think the talent here is unmatchable and there's so many different types of comics here that we just don't really have there like there's a lot more character comedy here which people back home would kind of roll their eyes at like that's not really a thing that's done mm -hmm. um a lot more musical comedy here which i think is great like there's a lot more just different types here and i love it and there's so many funny women here Oh, so without a doubt. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah, the women are better than the men, I would say. I agree. I agree. Like, so my first few weeks here, like, what, my first show in London was Old Rope at the Comedy Store. Tip Stevenson put me on. I didn't know her. And I think there was, like, three other girls. There were so many women on the show. And I remember being like, yeah. this, this is amazing, you know? Incredible. It, yeah. It, and it kind of blew me away. And then, like, I remember going, she set up like a lunch, like the next day she was like, you're new in town, let's go for lunch, I'll introduce you to people. And she brought like so many funny women and it was just such a good time. And I remember thinking like, this is great. This is so great to just be in a place where like, it's not like you're on a show with them and they're like, oh, it's a woman's night or a lady show. No, they just happen to be female and they just happen to all be on the bill and they happen to all be fantastic. If, if you're funny, you're funny. Yeah. Marvelous. It's as simple as that. Um, uh, have you done any comparing at comedy gigs? Have you done any? Not here, but in Canada, I did a lot of it. So in Canada, it's a bit different. They all, the compares are very experienced comics. I think it's kind of like that here, but I know in America, when you're new, you host. But I did a lot of it in Canada. I haven't had the opportunity to do it here. Um, 
also, I gotta be honest with you, in Canada, you get paid more to host, so there's an incentive. <laughs> but here, everybody on the show is making the exact same money, whether you're closing, opening, or hosting. Why wouldn't you want to open and do your 20 to get out of there, you know? So, because, because yeah. my, my next question was, do you prefer comparing no. them to a solo routine? No, I don't. No. No. Some comedians do. You know what? I did. No, I mean, it definitely depends on the gig. Yeah. Um, I do like comparing because I can talk to the audience and I love talking to the audience. But again, there's just not the incentive here to want to do it like financially. Like there yeah. just isn't like back home. You're making like at least a hundred bucks more to host. Right. So here it's like, no, I'll just go first and you go home early. <laughs> If I would say to you, what would, what is your comedy ambition? What would your answer be? What would you like to get out of doing it? I want stability. I want to be making enough that I don't have to worry, you know, like I do fine. I don't have another job, but I would like to like have savings, you know? Yeah. yeah. If like, like something happened to me and I couldn't work for four months, I'd be okay. Um, I don't want fame. I don't think I would do well with that. I don't think I have a thick enough skin, but I would like, I would like to get as far as I can get with sliding under the radar fame. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'd like yeah. people to know who I am, maybe have like a following, but I don't want that like paparazzi hiding in bushes type fame or being, I don't want that at all. Yeah, well, But I think for me, stability would be the first step. That would be my first goal. And I think after that, like, I definitely want to expand my horizons. I want to get on TV. I want to produce TV shows. I'd love to like, right for for tv shows like i'd love to kind of like not just be in stand-up comedy and i think i think that's been hard for me here because i haven't booked an acting job since i've been here i haven't written on anything and like back home like i didn't do a lot of it we don't have a lot of it but i did do it right so i think it's been hard for me to like kind of come back to just being a stand-up again so uh would you say you would love to write sitcoms or be yeah. issues or something like yeah. that? Is, is it my I, my ideal goal would be to have a chat show one day. I love, yeah. as you saw, like I love talking to people. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I you would be superb. I, yeah, and I think really I'm good work. at getting people to open up. Yeah. So I think long short term goal is just to have some stability in my life. Long term goal would be to have a chat show, like a comedy chat show. That's that's fantastic. Well, I wish you every success. Thank I you. think I I can't think of anybody better to do it. Gen genuinely. Thank you. I, I really think, appreciate I, that. I think I think you would be superb. Um, uh, again, when we've seen you live, what is what is wonderful? If you talk to someone in the audience, you will ask as far as you can with them you're not afraid to ask questions to them and yeah then, and i think people like that them. and i also want people to be comfortable with me i don't want to be mean like obviously yeah. i'll take the piss out of someone in like a jokey yeah. manner but i'm not going to insult somebody to the point that like like i know i've seen it i've seen some comedians do it and they do it well but as an audience member i wouldn't want that done to me you no. know i wouldn't want to be made to feel awkward um so I want to do it in a kind way. Like, I don't ever want to make people feel uncomfortable. And if there's somebody that I can tell they don't want to be talked to, I'll drop it. I'll move on. But I do think if you ask enough questions, you can generally get people to open up in a way that they're going to enjoy the experience. That's, that's, that's a wonderful answer because for years and years, I would sit either at the back of an audience or midway through yeah. And uh, I went to, I go to a, a comedy club called Always Be Comedy a lot. And uh, I sit on the front row there. But when I first went there, uh, I would sit midway back. And the first act I ever saw there was Josh Widdicombe, who's on the last leg. And, yeah. I, and I believe uh, Adam Hills, who hosts it, did he direct your show? Yes, he did. Yeah, there you go. So, so, so. Um, Josh Widdicombe was on stage and I, I and I and my laugh I was laughing away and he sort of like double backed and then the next time I sat at the front and the, I became part of the act That's and the confidence I got from sitting in the front row is sky high and you know I had another girl say that to me once she yeah. came to my show at the Brighton Fringe last year and she had found me online and was like oh I love your stuff like so I knew she was coming and I was like that 
so cool that some like I'm new here and somebody already became a fan. Yeah. Um, I think she saw me on like Catherine posted something when I first moved here, like about my show. And I got a few followers from that. So she had found me through Catherine Ryan's social media and then started coming to my shows. And she said that too, because I talked to her in the audience and she, she spoke, she got really into it. And she wrote me a message after and she was like, I am so shy. Never in my life did I think I'd ever talk in a room, a room full of people. Like, thank you so much for that experience. And I was like, wow, like I never thought of it that way. You there know? you go. There you go. When when we first saw you, um, that was the, that was the thing that stood out. You're you're absolutely fearless with an audience, and a lot of comedians aren't. You know, yeah. they will just do the routine. But it, but but it. That's what I said at the at the top of the interview. It's your very endearing quality that you can do that and you can do it well. So Thank you. I please, please, that. please don't give up. Also, I'll have to check it out. Always be comedy. I've never performed there yet. Yeah. Well, um, uh, I'll see you on the front row if you're there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like me, do you go to a lot of comedy gigs no. as a member of the audience? No. If I'm not on a show, I'm not going. <laughs> I spent enough of my life in comedy. <laughs> and you know what? I have a hard time paying attention to things. And also for me, if I'm watching comedy, it puts me in work mode. A lot of people don't understand that. Like even when I'm with a friend and they're like, oh, I want to watch this comedy special on Netflix. That's not relaxing for me. It puts me in work mode where I'm like, okay, like how did they come up with that? What if they did it this way? Why didn't I think of that? So it doesn't relax me. Like it puts me in work mode. And I don't laugh out loud a lot. For me, when I think something's funny, I'll go, Oh, that's funny. Like, I don't have to allow it to stand up. So it's the complete opposite of me. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, if you're on, I think you've answered this, if if you're on a comedy bill, would you stay and watch the other acts? Depends. <laughs> if I'm at, like, like, I did the comedy store lot, the weekend before last weekend, I think, and I made sure to watch everyone. Like, I didn't stay yeah. every single night but I definitely stayed to watch everyone at some point. Um, if I'm working with like people I haven't seen, I definitely try. But there are some nights that I'm there to try new material and it's such a long show. Shows here are longer. Like in North America, we don't have breaks. So the show's 90 um, minutes in and out. Yeah. So for here, sometimes the show's like three hours. I don't have time for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will try. I will try to make an effort, but no, sometimes I don't. Um, but if it's some someone I haven't seen or somewhere someone I think I can learn from, then I absolutely will. Or any any show at the comedy store because the comics are always great. I f I first went to the comedy store in nineteen eighty eight. I'd mm. just come down to London, and um, on the bill was um, Phil Jupiter's, uh, Richard Morton, Linda Smith, God bless her, and top of the bill was a, a, a comedian called Charles Fleischer, an American comic who was a very visual comic, and he was never heard of again because he went to Hollywood and he, he became the voice of Roger Rabbit, the Steven Spielberg film. Oh, yeah! <laughs> and I thought, this is incredible. And what a venue. I mean, it is... It's it's like Buckingham Palace where, where I love it. That I get nervous at the comedy store. I get nervous at the comedy oh. store because I'm so scared to mess it up and have them not book me again. Do you know what I mean? Like, because it's my favorite place I've ever performed. The energy is electric. The talent is unmatchable. So I get nervous there. Like I watch, they record it all. So I'll watch my tapes back and be like, oh my God, like, I don't think it went that well. Are they going to have me back? Are they going to, like, I get really nervous about that venue because I love it so much that I'm so scared to mess it up. Um, you're, you're okay playing loads of other venues. You, you, you don't mind where you play. No, I don't mind where I play. Like, I'm not picky about that, you no, know? No, I no. just want to perform. Like, I'm not... Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm fine at a lot of places. Um, I just think with there, because I love it so much, I care more about how my set goes, you know? It's a, it's a bit iconic there, isn't it? It's a bit... It's, it is. And like I said, like, I'm so grateful to get to perform there. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm so nervous that I'm going to do something wrong and they're going to be like, we're not going to book you again, you know? Like, that's definitely the insecurity in me, but I, I just love it so much. Um, have you played any online gigs as opposed to live gigs? I did one and I hated it so much. I'll never do it again. Like, <laughs> it's hard for me. You've seen how I connect with the audience. You can't do that online. No. You can't do what I do online. So I found it very restricting. 
And I didn't like the way it made me feel. And then it's like, okay, I just bombed and I'm in my house. This is weird, you know? So I can't get into it, no. What's what's interesting is when the pandemic was on um, and everywhere was very sadly shut, it was decimated, it was awful. Um, when the online gigs were done well, it was much better than nothing. I've heard, I've but, heard. But, but you cannot be, for me, you cannot be live comedy. There is, there is something about going out on a Friday or a Saturday night, having a few drinks, sitting down and saying, right, make me laugh, entertain me. And because it's of the moment, you never know what's going to happen. And that's the magic of it. Yeah, that's Very true. much so. Um, uh, please, 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 as I say, keep doing what you're doing. Because, Thank you. Because I, genuinely, you are a great comedian. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. It's good to hear because, like, I definitely have some days where, like, yeah, I definitely my I, my moods go up and down a lot when it comes yeah. to like, yeah, where yeah. how I'm doing in this business. So it's really nice to hear that. Well, you've been a fantastic guest. It's been it's been an absolute joy talking to you. Is there is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap up? Um, uh, what uh, uh, social media uh, uh, is uh, uh, link. Yeah, I mean, follow me on social media. It's uh, at Michelle Spunny. So Michelle S. Spunny, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-S -E yeah. Spunny. Follow me online. I love social media. Well, I, lo I love and hate it. I'd like to get famous enough to not need it. That's the level of fame. But <laughs> I, um, yeah, follow me online. And like, I really like when people reach out to me online after shows. I love that. I love that so much. And I find that that happens a lot more here than it did in Canada, because I think there's a different level of respect for comedy here. Um, so yeah. please follow me online. Feel free to send me a message. Like, I, I love interacting with like people that like what I do. I think, I think, uh, the, I think certainly comedy in Britain, there is much more of a community, as you say. Yeah, yeah. No. we don't have that. Like, I think where I'm, from Toronto's great. I'm not gonna say it's not. There's a lot of stage time, but the people aren't. When you ask somebody, "What are you going to see?" Oh, I, I'm going to this comedy club. I'm going to that. They don't know the names of the people. It's not like here where people are like, "I saw you here. I liked it, so I'm gonna follow yeah. you. I'm gonna yeah, follow yeah. you online. I'm gonna become a fan." It's like the people there aren't really necessarily becoming fans of the comic. They're becoming yeah, yeah. Fans of like the club, if that makes sense. And yeah, it's no so. fault of anybody else's. It's just the way the industry is there. We don't have the same level of love or respect for it that they do in Britain like it's just insane and I love it so much well it's why my blog and podcast exist because yeah. I don't think I don't think uh, uh, it's ever uh, been done from an audience point of view where, where where you sit there and things happen and you're there on the night and you can describe what goes on and and it's it's fascinating how it how it's taken off just from a humble a fan like myself <laughs> That's great. Um, do you have any podcasts or anything like that? No, I'm going to start a podcast soon. I've been saying this for months, but I keep changing my mind of what it's going to be about. And I keep like paying to like have the logo done and the title. And then I'm like, mm, I don't want to do that. Like, because my moods go all over the place. So if I'm depressed, I'm like, I'm going to do one about depression. And then if I'm having a great day, I'm going to be like, I'm going to do one about how wonderful the universe is. Like, I cannot figure it out. So I think I'm just going to dive into it and figure out what it's about as I go along, if that makes sense, because I love talking. So yeah. I feel like I can talk. You would be, you um, so, would be great on a podcast. You so I definitely want to start one, but I, I think it'll just be me by myself because like I don't really know anybody here to do one with me. So I'm just going to have to dive in and take a chance. Well, I, for one, will be listening and Thank I, you. for one, will be coming to see you again very soon live. I think, as I say, I think you're a terrific comedian. You're so, so good with an audience that, as I say, they, the, the warmth that you give them, it, they give it back to you. So I please, really please, please keep doing what you do. Thank you so much. I'm going to be first in line when, when you're on a bill next. And all the very best to you. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your night. You take care. Thank you. Bye.